Welcome. Namaste everyone and welcome to Gentle Healing Yoga. So Kali Rose Zerni, I am a certified yoga therapist, certified yoga instructor, certified personal fitness trainer, certified holistic practitioner. I wear many hats, there's more. But what's important is that we can go on this healing journey together and make people feel better and heal. So that's what our gentle class is about. And we're going to begin in Sukhanasana. Easy sit. Just be comfortable. Legs crossed, legs extended, a little bit of both. And if you have a hard time sitting, it's, it's a great idea to take a rolled up towel or a small, not so thick pillow and put it under the edge of your butt, just before your sit bones. Now, Look at where my knees are. Now watch them drop as I add this under the edge of my butt, much lower. Pelvic bowl is much more happy. And we're going to work, be working in pelvic liberation for the next maybe two, three, four weeks. You see our pelvic bowl, our pelvic area, uh, it, often changes the dynamics of our bodies structurally, the, the uh, organs, the endocrines. So if you can heal your pelvic bowl, you can heal many parts of your body. So let's begin by coming together in oneness, balanced on your sit bones. Let's find the magic of our breath. So we inhale positive energy in. And we exhale negative energy out. Inhale. Peace and calm. And exhale stress and chaos. Om Varne Nam Nama that's a mantra or a sound healing chants, mantras. Uh, direct energy, healing energy into our bodies. And that mantra means, my life is in harmony with cosmic law. So let's begin by opening up the tailbone area, the root chakra. And allow that grounding earth energy in. Feel, feel it passing through the sacred waters of your sacral chakra beneath your navel, basking in the fires of the solar plexus chakra beneath your rib cage, breathing in the vital breath of the heart chakra, absorbing the ethereal voice at the throat, pouring through any disillusion in your third eye. And lastly, spilling up and out of the crown chakra like a fountain into the cosmos and feel it drifting, healing, body, mind, and soul. So today's mudra, our hand gesture, hand gestures, the way you hold your fingers, your hands, your arms, direct certain energy to areas of the body, it heals emotions. So we're going to draw our fingers together, and this is called Mukala Mudra, or it means the beak. Because if you look at how your hands look, it looks like the beak of a bird or the head of a bird. So bringing healing energy to all seven chakras and every organ in the body, every, every structural system, endocrine receives healing energy. And interesting enough, the energy goes where it needs to go the most. So holding on to mudras, anywhere from 30, 45 seconds up to two, three, four, five minutes. You can do these hand gestures, these mudras, watching TV, just sitting and relaxing in your gardens, breathing in and out of your nose. 
one more breath with Sukhanasana and then let go. Let's begin our somatics, joint freeing, clearing negative energy, also called uh, Supigrin in Sanskrit. Let's lower our chins into the hollow of our throats and all of your thoughts pouring out of your heads into the earth to be recycled. Let's take that heavy head and rock it gently side to side so we brush away the stress of our day. Or if you're just waking up, the cobwebs of our dreams. Let's try a complete circle all the way around. And if it hurts, modify it. Still hurts. Take a time out. Let's reverse it. We do what we can and we leave the rest. It's called ahimsa. Nonviolence to every living and non living thing on our planet. Chins back into the hollow of your throat. Shoulders, arms, heads, and hands, and surrender. And then inhale the head up slowly. You make it all the way up to the top. Let's work from head to toe, shoulders, small circles. And how have you been feeling lately? Really tired? Perhaps uh, sneezing? A um, lot of mucus, congestion, post-nasal drip? You might have sensitivities. Not necessarily allergies, and they can't be detected by uh, medical tests. Uh, those shots, etc. Let's exhale and raise our arms and raise our energy. I've had many people reach out and ask me these questions. Circles with your hands. Let it flow from your elbows. Why am I so tired? It could be the cosmos. Let's reverse it. But more likely with the uh, warm weather we've been having and the high pollen count from your wrists, it could be a histamine response. Allergies, sensitivities, and they can develop any time in our lives. Let's reverse it. So first of all, you need to clear your respiratory tract if it's environmental. And I am a huge proponent, proponent of Jala Neti, the Neti pot. So clearing, rinsing, it's a nasal douche. It rinses out your upper respiratory tract. You fill these these cute little pots up with warm water, a pinch of sea salt, maybe up to an eighth, a quarter of a teaspoon. And you lean over the sink and you insert that neti pot into the nostril. You tilt your head towards the neti pot, or I should say away from, and you might sputter and cough, open up your mouth, and breathe like you have a snorkel mask on. So breathing through your mouth while there's water, it might even be a little bit tender at first. It might take many times before the water actually breaks through. Mucus and congestion can harden up in our sinuses and it can feel like constant pressure. And then you want to refill your neti pot, add your sea salt, try to use Distilled water, filtered water, not chlorinated. The chlorine and the chemicals in the, in the uh, town, city, county water often burn and sting the nasal passages. And then do it again. Insert it into that nostril. Tilt your head away from the neti pot. Open up your mouth and breathe in and out of your nose. So keep in the upper respiratory tract clear. And then when you're done, you want to lean back over your sink, inhale through your mouth, and exhale forcefully through your nostrils. And maybe do that two or three times. And that's the beginning of what to do. So let's lift up our rib cage and continue supigrin. Let's do a rib cage roll. And if you have anything underneath you, remove it. Rib cage roll. And you want to be aware of the pollen count, you can go to my website, bodyglyphics.com, and go to the local pollen count page. 
input your zip code and it'll tell you what the offenders are in your neck of the woods. In Western New York, it's grasses and plantain. So if you're unsure of what's messing with you, it could very well be that. Let's roll around on our sit bones. Pollen count has been higher than normal. So many of us are developing these sensitivities. Let's reverse it. And if you feel like you're being bothered by the environmental uh, uh, toxins in the air, you can always also avoid foods that are high in histamine that will create a high histamine response. And those such foods are fermented alcohol such as beer, wine, and kombucha. It's fermented. It can cause a, hist a histamic response. Cured meats, citrus fruits, avocados, yes. We love our avocados, eggplants, spinach, and tomatoes, mature cheeses, beans, chickpeas, soybeans, peanuts, peanut butter, walnuts, cashews, chocolate, and other cocoa-based products, smoked fish, mackerel, mahi-mahi, tuna, anchovies, and sardines, all high in the histemic response. Let's do a safe twist. Inhale, push top. Foods that are low. Uh, hist histamine releasing are things such as cod or wild caught fish, chain size, eggs are low histamine, fresh fruit such as mangoes, pears, watermelon, kiwi and grapes, berries, leafy greens, inhale the heart up, herbal teas, broccoli, onions, garlic and apples, low histamine. Inhale, folks, your heart's up and maybe your head back. Exhale, heads up, abdominals in and your knees down towards the earth. And let's do that one more time. See if you can pick up those sit bones. And if you can, squeeze them close together. Maybe tilt that head back. And it's release, relax, and lower. Let's kick up that left foot. Feminine, lunar side. Grab your foot if you can. If you can't, grab the back of this leg. And you know you can do this in a chair if it's more comfortable. Circles with your heel, loosens up your knees. Let's return it. And environmental toxins can come from air conditioning units. Uh-huh. And in the winter, it can come from mold spores. And if your furnace is in your basement, foot up hard up and the leg comes in. Circles with your foot if you've got a leaky roof or a damp basement. Mold spores can be released any time of the year. Let's return it. And then bend at the knee and let's rock our baby. Nice and easy, gentle way to open up your hips. And then let's lower this leg and turn your left foot upside down and take your thumbs and make little tiny circles in the roots of your toes. So yes, lactic acid, uric acid can build up in our feet. And if we don't clear it, if we don't break it up, it'll harden and turn into arthritis and to the pads beneath those roots. Working our way into the arch of our foot, heading towards our heel. And you know, you can put me on pause and you can uh, work your feet longer than when you get to your heel. A thumb or a couple of knuckles. Little circles on the perimeter of your heel. And then dead center of your heel. Today, let's take our toes and scissors them back and forth. You're big in your second toe back and forth. Second and the third. So heel in the body through our feet. Third and the fourth. And getting our feet ready for the standing poses. Fourth and the fifth. And then let's tuck this left leg in, left foot in, and kick up the right foot and do it again. Circles with this heel. And then reverse it as we loosen up our knees. 
and then straighten this leg as we get into our hamstring, the foot up, the heart up, and the leg coming in. And then back up a wee bit so you can make nice circles with your foot. Let it flow from your ankle. Return it. Onto our hip, bend at the knee and rock your baby. Nice gentle way to open up those hips. And then lay your right leg down, turn the bottom of the foot up and into the roots of our toes. Those pads beneath your roots. The arch of your foot, we're looking for clues at the scene of the crime. So tender spots in the feet, as long as it's not an injury or a bruise, can indicate a problem in the body. All you got to do is Google foot reflexology map and locate the spot and notice what organ needs some help, some attention. And when you get to that heel, work the perimeter. And if you want to do it naturally, you can always reach out to me as a holistic practitioner. I do wellness consults face to face or phone. And then back to our toes. Let's take our big toe, second toe, and scissors them back and forth. Second and the third. Third and the fourth. Fourth and the fifth. And then we're going to bring these two warmed up feet together and back up your sit bones or push your feet forward. But reach down for your feet or your ankles and inhale, breathe into your belly. Fully and completely. And then exhale, let's fold forward gingerly with a heavy head so we're not stressing our necks. Relax the root of your tongue, the wings of your nose, and notice how much lower you can go. Breathing in and breathing out. And then today, let's back up and do some toe yoga. So hands behind you, your feet on the floor. And let's do it. Be comfortable. Let's take just the big toe and push it down. Your big toe and your second toe, and don't look, just feel. <laughs> They're probably not moving too much. Big toe, second toe, third toe. Really make an effort. Add the fourth toe to the mix. Add the fifth toe. And then let's do it in the same order. Pick up just the big toe. It's not about how it's happened, it's about your intention. Big toe, second toe, can you pick them up? Maybe take a peek. <laughs> and now add that third toe. Fourth toe, fifth toe, and then wiggle those toes right out. We really neglect our feet. And then soften up and let's go right into Upavista Konasana. Those legs out to the side, your knees and toes, point them up, and we all have a different expression of this pose. So place your hands in front of you. Inhale that rib cage up off your waist. And then exhale, walk, slide your hands forward. And we go to our limit and we breathe. With a heavy head, this is a great place to manifest. It's called the Sankalpa. What have you always wanted that you've been afraid to ask for? Breathe it in and breathe it out. Visualize it coming into fruition in your mind's eye. And then let's back it up. Let's walk, slide our hands in and let's turn to our right. Swing those legs around. And yep, we're gonna bounce, shake things out. And then a little bit of hip walking up and down your mat. Supported, unsupported, with our movement, without our movement. Somewhere in the middle of your mat, 
Let's bring up the sun, seated sun pose. Raise your arms above your head. And then exhale, let's fold forward. With your rib cage up off your waist. Gaze off your fingertips. Let's grab on and fold into these legs. So where do you feel this? The back of the knees, the hamstrings, the buttocks, the low back, middle back, upper back. These are the areas you want to work on. And then let's back it up. Let's take that left hand outside your right leg and inhale your right hand. I believe it's your right hand behind you. I'm doing the opposite, so we're on the same page. And then exhale, return it. So right hand outside that left leg, and then inhale your left arm behind you. Follow your thumb, your fingers with your gaze. Go to your limit, and then return it. Remember, we're all different. Practice. The more you practice yoga, the more, uh, the more pain-free you become, the more flexible you become, the stronger you become. Let's bring our knees in and as close as you can, wrap your arms around your legs. Your left hand will grab your right hand and let's push the knees into the crooks of our elbows. So my wrist just snapped, popped, it was out of alignment and relax, and then grab that right hand. Right hand grabs your left hand, and get the spine straighter, push your knees into the crooks of the elbows, the arms. Stretching out your wrist, your forearms, your hands. And then soften up and straighten up a little bit straighter, get a little bit taller. Open up all 24 vertebrae, and breathe in and out of your nose. Complete yogic breathing. And then let's soften up and round up. So we're going to rock and roll on our yoga mat. Or if you've just eaten, you might want to take a time out. Keep that food moving through your digestive and eliminatory tract. So today, let's rock it up. And keep it up and roll it over onto all fours. So your hands, place them beneath your shoulders, your knees right under your hips, into table back, and then we're gonna do cat flow. So you go from cat to cow. And you start out easy, and as you become more fluid-like, you can put more effort in. It depends on how you feel today. Every day is different. We must respect and honor our bodies. Our bodies have boundaries and limitations. And when you pass, when you bypass those boundaries, you're creating damage to joints, muscles, organs. Come to neutral in tau wag, rocking those hips side to side. Your body is your temple. Respect and honor it. And maybe add some head and shoulder movement to that tau wag. And then we're going to put cat flow and tau wag together. So it may feel really strange, but the more you do it, the more, the better it'll feel. More healing. Let's reverse it. And then to neutral, we're heading into our down dog. And down dog's not for everyone. If it's not for you, um, come up and we'll meet you in mountain pose, Tadasana. So if you're up for down dog, curl those toes under. We're going to lift up our knees. Let your heads get heavy. And try to ground your feet. Push your hands deeper into the earth. Internal rotation of your thighs. External rotation of your shoulders. And then soften up and pump those feet. It's called walking the dog. 
Let's baby step, let's tippy toe, let's bring our feet in towards our hands and when you can't get any closer, bend those knees radically, let go of the earth and we're going to ragdoll up one vertebrae at a time. When you all know, make it all the way up to the top, let's put our two hands behind us. Our elbows closer together. Let's bend our knees, push your hips forward, lift up your heart chakra, tilt your chin up, and awaken the front doors of your chakras. And then heads up, let's bend our knees and rag dial down. Let's surrender to what is, letting go of what was, and have faith in what will be. And remind yourself to check in and see if you're complaining. And speech or thought or about a situation. And change it. Either leave the situation or change it. Let's come all the way up. Let us find beak, mukala, mudra. And bring your hands up above your head and let the healing happen. Let it go to where it needs to go. Two hands up above your head. We're going to crescent moon to your right. And again, the head has to get heavy because if you're straining to hold it up, you're just creating more tension, stress, tightness in those muscles. And then rise up inside your space. Let's inhale here. And then exhale. Let's crescent moon to your left with a heavy head again. And then back up to uh, neutral, Shashumna, balance the right and left, release your mudra, palms out, and let's soft knees, let's draw down the moon. So today we're going to attempt tree pose, a little bit more intense than cactus. When you touch all the way down, bring your right foot to your left ankle. Let's find Bhik Mukala Mudra and bring up the sun. Your arms become your branches, your legs become your trunk. Trees are deeply rooted, soft arms. Maybe you can hike this right foot up your left leg. Holding on and breathing. So we learn from the trees to be deeply rooted. <laughs> To bend gently with the wind, the breezes. Let it go, guys. Let's draw down the moon. Step out of it. Bring your arms down and shaki shake. Shake out your hands. Shake out your feet. Shake out your hips. Shake out your legs. Whatever feels tense or tight. And we'll repeat. Frickin' asana, tree pose. Feet, shoulder, hip width. Inhale, let's bring up the sun. Beak, mukala, mudra. Your arms are soft, your hands over your head, shoulders permitting, and all your weight goes to your right foot. And bring your left foot over, and you can keep your left toes grounded. You don't have to come up that leg. So this too is tree pose. Be like the trees, a mighty oak, the apple, and poplar like walnut, whatever you have in your yard. And did you know that trees communicate with each other? Science is finding out a lot of info about those trees. But step out of it. Through the root systems, let's draw down the moon. Or drop out of your tree and then shaky shake. Shake out your hands, your legs, your arms, your head. Whatever got tense or tight. And let's step our feet wide apart. So ground your feet. Send those roots deep into the earth. Let's pull our thighs back. Let's relax our tailbone, our root chakra. Like a peacock. Feel those, your tail feathers behind you opening up. 
Soft tailbones, draw your thighs back. And then let's find our mudra again. Beak. The beak, Ukala mudra. Let's bring up the sun. And your two hands up above your head. Big inhale, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. And then exhale, let's make some noise. Ha! Drop your shoulders down away from your ears. So this is a cleansing breath. This breath is great for clearing upper respiratory, lower respiratory tract. Do it again and stress. Inhale, shrug up. Exhale. Ha! One more cleansing breath. Inhale, shrug up. Exhale. Ha! Can you feel tension release in your shoulders? Palms out, release your mudra. And draw down the moon. Pulling through your space slowly, clearing your aura. Taking control back. We're going to bend our knees and place our hands on our thighs. Slide your hands down towards your knees. Let your sit bones get heavy. Let your shoulders rise up inside your neck. And just strength, stretch, lengthen that lumbar section of your back. And then a soft twist. Take your left shoulder and twist it to the right. Turn your head to the right. Soften the tongue in your mouth. Let the edges of your tongue move towards the inside of your mouth. Feel your head relax, your shoulders relax, your hips, your back. So the tongue and the tailbone, the pelvic bowl, have a, have a strong connection. Let's change sides. Energetically, right shoulder goes left. And the connective tissue, the fascia. Navel into the spine, relax your tongue. Let it get wider. Breathing in and out of your nose. And then back to neutral or shashumna. Let's rise up. Inhale your arms out to the side with Bhik Mukala Mudra. Trikonasana, the tree pose. Let's hinge from our waist to the right. And then we tilt. Right hand down, left hand up. Ground your feet and pick up your chin, your gaze. Draw your thighs back. Soften that tailbone area. And back up inside your space. Inhale yourself right here. And then exhale, hinge to your left. Left coming down, right coming up. Draw your thighs back. Gaze up towards that right mudra. Heads are heavy, of course. And back up to neutral or shashumna. So we're going to twist our triangle. Pick up your left heel and spin your body to the right. Hearts up in your chest. Spine a little straighter. Let's come back to neutral or shashumna. Inhale here. Exhale, lifting up your right heel as we twist our bodies to the left. Head up higher, hard up higher, go a little farther. And then let's come back to neutral or shashumna. Little more, let's change from triangle to goddess. Bend your arms, bend your elbows. Notice my elbows are lower than shoulders. Up higher, it stresses the rotator cuffs. Keep elbows a little lower than your shoulders. Goddess pose, we want to bend the knees and tuck your tailbones underneath your shoulder blades. Hold your mortar and curl your toes under. Draw your tongues into the bottom of your mouth. This brings healing energy down towards your low back. Down your legs into your feet and helps you stay grounded. And then let's straighten up, let's soften up. Back to that cleansing breath. Inhale, shrug up. Exhale, drop them down. Ha! The louder you go, the more stress you release. Inhale, shrug up. Exhale. Ha! One more time. 
Exhale. Ha! Back to goddess. Bend your elbows. Bring them lower than your shoulders. Release your mudra. Bend your knees and sink. Tuck your sit bones under. Spread your fingers. Spread your toes. This time, draw your tongues up to the roof of your mouth. Speak your truth. Work that throat chakra. Roll your eyeballs into your eyebrows. Stretch that optic nerve. Pour through any disillusion in your life. Breathe in and out of your nose. Let's soften up and let's straighten up one more time. Inhale, three more cleansing breaths. Shrug it up. Exhale, ha! Two more. Inhale, shrug up. Exhale, ha! Oh yeah, last one. Inhale, shrug up. Exhale, ha! And let's draw down the moon. Clear your aura. Take control back. Keep your IQ up there. Yada, 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 yada. You've probably heard me say this a gazillion times. And let's, let's uh, go down to all fours. So let's place our hands right under our shoulders. Our knees right under our hips. So actually, let's bring our knees close together. So reluctant cat, turn your head towards me. Look around that shoulder. So try to catch sight of your feet. And then change sides. Turn your head away from me. Look around that shoulder. Try to catch sight of your feet. So our reluctant cat, always looking back at its past, will never m move forward in life. Let's go back to neutral, Shashumna, and work our core. So core work is absolutely important. It's a large part of our yoga. Let's kick back that left leg and send forth that right arm. Ground that right shin. Gaze down at the floor underneath you, inside your left hand. And drop that right hand down, that left knee down, knees close together. Let's change sides. Kick back that right leg. And send forth that left arm. How are we doing, folks? Breathing in and out of our nose. And lower left hand, right knee. Widen up those knees. We're going to back up into wide-legged child's pose. And some of you might only be able to go halfway back. That's baby pose. Elbows down and lower the head. All the way back onto the feet is child's pose. Arms stretched or arms soft. Great place to reflect. Stretches the back. The hips, the groin, shoulders. And then let's shift our weight back to all fours. Yes, our knees are wide apart. And our hands coming closer together. Let's strengthen our upper body. Let's bend our elbows and push them straight. Shoot for six. Five, four, three, two, last one, and then back it up again into wide-legged child's or baby pose. Arms stretched or arms retracted, it depends what your shoulders are okay with. And then heads up, let's go back to all fours. This time, bring your knees close together and your hands wider apart, right off your yoga mat. But if you're slipping and sliding over there, put part of your hand on your yoga mat. So let's try six of these. Bend your arms and straighten. One, two, three. Four, five, 
Six, and now we'll back it up with our legs close together and bring your arms by your sides if this is all right with your knees. Into a narrow child or baby pose. Heads are heavy, hanging, arms are soft. So go back to the root of the, go back to your tongue. Let it get soft. Feel the edges of your tongue move towards your teeth. Feel your eyes relax, the wings of your nose, your low back, your hands, your arms. It's amazing how this, the, the tongue, the neck, connected to the hips, pelvic area, the back. And then heads up, let's walk our arms forward. We're going to go as far forward as we can. We're going to elbow down and then walk our legs back and belly down as we connect with our sphinx pose. Elbows are right under your shoulders. Fingers are spread apart. Your tailbone, push it down. Lift up your heart and if this is too much on your low back, move your elbows out to the side. It'll take you a little bit lower. And once again, press your tongue into the roof of your mouth. Throat chakra, roll your eyeballs into your eyebrows. Third eye chakra. Breathing in and out of our nose. And then soften up, elbows out to the side. Let's stack one hand on top of the other. Let's walk our legs, our feet, our knees close together. And we're going to put the left leg over the right leg. This is the, the moon over the sun. This is feminine energy over masculine. Inhale, squeeze your knees, squeeze your thighs. Exhale, relax. Do it again, working uh, the lower back, the hips, and connective tissue from toe to head. Exhale, relax. One more time, inhale, squeeze your knees, squeeze your thighs, and pause. But keep breathing. Keep squeezing. And then soften up all over. We're going to change that dominant leg uncross, put the right ankle over the left ankle and we're going to do it again. Inhale, squeeze your knees, squeeze your thighs. Can you feel it? Exhale, relax. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, relax. Inhale, squeeze, and this time we're going to squeeze. We're going to hold the squeeze, but keep breathing. And then exhale, relax. So your left arm, stretch it over your head. Rest your head on that left arm, left shoulder, and take your right hand outside that right shoulder. And then bend the right leg at the knee and curl that right leg over your left leg. So reverse twisted lizard pose and we hold this. Breathing in and out of our nose. And then let it go. Let's change legs. Let's change arms. Let's change sides. Send that right leg over your head. Retract the left arm. And then bend that left leg at the knee and curl it over your right leg. Go to your limit. We're all different. And let's pause here and breathe in and out of your nose. Reverse twisted lizard pose. It should feel really good on you. And then soften up. We're going to bend both legs at the knees. We're going to prop up onto our elbow and check your alignment. You want your heels 
your tailbone and your head to be in perfectly straight alignment. And we're going to work with the clam, another way to heal the pelvic bowl in your back. By picking up that top knee and keeping your heels touching each other. Focus on that top leg. Focus on lifting it. And then release it and relax and lower. Let's do six of these. Inhale, pick up that top knee. Keep your heels connected. Inhale with it. And then exhale, close those knees five more times. Inhale, top knee up. And what's your tongue doing in your mouth? Pay attention, guys. Soften it. Exhale, relax four more times. Inhale, lift up that top leg. Keep your heels connected. Exhale. I think we've got two more to do. Inhale, top leg up. Keep your heels connected. Breathing with it fully and completely. Exhale, lower. One more time. Focus on the lift. Inhale. Heels connected. Exhale, lower. So you can either flip it around or you can just turn away from me. But we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So... Propped up on elbow, your knees are bent. Your heels, your sit bones, your tailbones, and your head should be in a straight line. Let's try one. Picking up that top leg, keeping your heels connected. Working in the clam. Exhale, lower. So good for hip, low back issues, knees. Here we go, six times. Inhale, bring up that top knee. Exhale. Five more times. Inhale, that top knee, pick it up. Exhale, lower. Four more times. Inhale, lift up that top knee. Heels are connected. Exhale, three more times. Inhale, top leg, heels connected. Exhale, lower two more times. Your heels, your tailbone, and your head straight line. Inhale, top knee up. Exhale, lower one more time. Inhale, really pick up that top leg, that knee. Heels are t touching. And my neck just cracked snapped in. So more proof that this pelvic bowl and the neck, the tongue, the jaw are all connected. Exhale, relax. And from here, let's roll it over onto our backs. And y'all know what to do when you get there. Bend those knees, plant your feet, shoulder, hip width apart. And we want to smooth any wrinkles out of our back. We want to soften we're close our eyes and we're going to take that external focus and bring it within. So relax your tongue and let the edges of your tongue move towards your teeth. Relax the wings of your nose and back doors of your eyes. Your inner ear canal, can you feel your hips relax? Definitely a connection. So onto our gracilis, let's walk our feet close together. Uh, that right leg on that left leg. And our fingertips gently push that right knee away. Now, if this is already too tight, gracilis runs from the pubic bone to the inside of the knee. If this is too tight, no need to push. Just this leg movement. And if you got any wiggle room, a gentle push. And then let go. If you're comfortable with that, let's try uh, eye of the needle. So kick up that left leg and grab the back of it. And, and gently bring it in. If you're in pain, this is not for you. Work in an eye of the needle. 
and then let's lower and change legs, change sides. Let's put that left leg on the right leg, and if you got any extra movement in there, fingertips inside that left knee and gently push it away. How are you doing? And then let go. And if that was okay, you can lift up the right leg and try to grab the back of it and bring it in. Can you feel it in that left hip? Relax the root of your tongue. Let your tongue get wider. Relax the wings of your nose. And then let go. Let's put both feet down. Shoulder, hip with arms by her sides, palms down. And then lift up hips in bridge pose. And if you can, peek, mukala mudra. Wiggle your elbows, your shoulders, shoulder. And I just got a cramp. <laughs> Sorry about that. Move your elbows, your shoulder blades closer together underneath you. Hips up a little bit higher. And then release your mortar. Turn your palms down. Place them strategically closer together. And then bring your hips down right on top of your hands. Straighten your legs. Draw your elbows closer together. And then lift up your heart and tilt that head back. Try to get to the top of your head. To the top of the earth. And then let's back it up out of the pose. Bend the knees. Plant your feet hips up off your hands. Smooth wrinkles out of your back. Bring your knees into your cupped hands and we've got some gentle pumping going on. And then small circles with your knees. Let's finish this. Finish our practice. The asana part, the physical part. And then return it. Let's drop our feet down and push our legs straight. Slowly stretch your hands, your arms above your head. Bhikkhukala Mudra. And then push that left heel farther away and relax the right side. Soften up and change sides. Push that right heel away and relax the left side. And then soften up. Let's bring our arms back down by our sides. Let's make circles with our feet. Circles with our hands. Roll your head around your shoulders. And then return it. Unwinding, going the other way. And this is a great time to get more comfortable. And if that means a bolster underneath your knees, a pillow underneath your knees, something under your head but as I come into a seated position you all are moving into Savasana so get comfortable soften or close your eyes and reconnect with your breath breathing in and out of our nose so we inhale positive energy in. We've probably already cleared all the negative energy out. So exhale love and gratitude into the air around you. Do it again. Inhale positive energy in. Exhale negative energy. Not negative, but gratitude and love. And let it flow out of your body into your room. Do it again. Inhale through your nose and exhale. Let this gratitude, this love flow out of your room into your, uh, your yard, gardens, your town, your village. And keep breathing this way. Let your energy flow through the state of New York, the U.S. of A., and may the cycle of cell renewal be exactly in balance with your body's highest good. Breathing. May the production of all enzymes in your 
May the production of all enzymes, proteins, and hormones be in perfect response for your body's best health. May the cells that are dying be quickly recycled. As I call my cells to their most efficient work. May the cells that clear bacteria, toxic substances, have energy for their best work. Be keen and fully supported by my immune system. May all the systems inside and outside my cells that are responsible for optimal health be working in unison and perfectly. Breathing in and out of our nose. Let your tongue get wider. Let the energy, the chi, the prana in your body continue to spread. Love. To anybody in your neck of the woods and then beyond that. And today, let's make sure that we're not catching ourselves complaining, either in speech or thoughts. Thoughts become things too. Breathing in and out of our nose. Pratahara, the process of going within. Releasing any tension that we may have missed. Awaken. Awaken to the sound of the tinctures. So this tone, this sound, is a sound healing. It resonates in the top of your head, your brain, your nervous system, and your connection to your source. So let's bend our knees and plant our feet and break our meditation, our savasana, slowly. Let's take our heads and rock them gently side to side. This morning I woke up all out of sorts. And what I figured out within the next half hour was my soul was not inside my body. That all I had on the physical earth plane, this dimension, was my body and my mind. So I had to call my soul back to me. And this can happen to anybody. Let's roll our heads towards me and if it's a good side, continue to roll. And I, I was so discombobulated. Nope, I was not grounded, I was not connected. Let's be mindful of our head, neck, shoulders. Let your head sink into the earth. So I just tried to be still and it didn't work until I called my soul back. Where are you? I need you. So your soul is in control of the body for the most part. Your will, your ego, your mind, all the same thing. 
often tries to take control. So let's rise up. We've already grounded. Let's use two hands. Come back to that seated position where you started. Legs crossed, legs extended, a little bit of both. And when I say a little bit of both, this is what I mean. If you need to put that blanket, that bolster, back underneath you, please do. But let's pull our spines right out of our sit bones. Your arms rolling, flowing into your lap, into your mudra, beak, mukala mudra. Breathe deep. Connect with earth. Connect with water at the sacral chakra. Your arms flowing into your lap like a waterfall or a fountain. Connect with air as you breathe in and out of your nose. Let the breath fan the fire at the solar plexus chakra. And then let's bring the sides of our hands together. We always close with gratitude. Plant those seeds. Visualize something you're grateful for. Turn it into a star seed of light. Plant it in your hand, your gratitude gardens. It's got to be at least one thing. And then we'll close up our gratitude gardens and bring it right into our soul shine. So they say our soul is one inch to the right. Oh, well, that's your left. Here's your right. Of your heart chakra, one inch to the right. Put your thumbs right in that spot. So when you chant OM, OM is a sound healing. It's the most powerful sound on our planet, powerfully healing. So you can feel your soul vibrate when you chant OM. Are we ready? Inhale with me. Oh. Namaste and so much love. Thank you for joining me. And please, if you can, donate. This has been way too long without income into our studios. So suggestion is $13, whatever you can financially. Much gratitude.